close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yes, you close your eyes. I can see you. I want you to go on a journey with me. I want you to think about the 90s. Well, if you're not there, <laughs> just imagine how it was. I want you to think about a tailoring shop. Do you guys know a tailoring shop? Uh, I want you also to think about the fundies on their cherehanis. Stepping on them, occasionally they stop to cut the fabric and measure and sometimes gossip. I want you to think about a six-year-old boy playing in that shop. He's probably a few centimeters shorter than the tailoring machines. He plays with pieces of fabric instead of being home, you know, playing bano or playing with um, cut box, bo milk boxes, you know. He's playing with pieces of fabric, putting them together. Occasionally, when he has time, he uses them together. Now come back. Come back, wake up, wake up, wake up. So that six-year-old boy was me, and the shop was called Nelson Taylor's, a five by 10 meter shop in Bama Market. The shop belonged to my mom. She bought it from her uncle. Well, not exactly, but it was a gift from my dad to my mom when my dad had that my uncle, her uncle was traveling and going back to Dala, the village. In that shop, we created the best memories of my childhood. My mother was considered a fundi. A fundi is a tailor. But that was the most suitable name she could be given in the 90s. If she was there now today, she'd be a designer or a stylist. So her, Akinia Dongo, Sally Carago, Yvonne Afrosit, Call you and watch would be in the same category. My mom made clothes for various people. She actually just went to them, met them, talked to them, listened to what they want, you know, share, listen to the ideas, advise them what to do, go find fabric, take him to her tailors, make clothes, fit them with the, with the client and then would advise them on what to do and how to wear them. My mother got the privilege of dressing people way before celebrities. How many of you remember Masi Oburu? She used to be on KTN. Christine Guku. How many know Isabella Kituri now? My mother dressed them way back. My mother started dressing celebrities way before it was actually something people do in this city. But then, that was her side hustle. You see, tailoring in our family was not considered as a job. My mother worked as an administrator in the Ministry of um, Water. And her father would not, let me tell you my grandfather, by the way, do you know those African parents? They're like, this is not possible. There's no way you're going to leave good health care, a good retirement plan, and good salo, so that you can go and become a tailor. It's not possible. So she could not. But you know what the irony was? Anyone wants to know the irony? My grandmother <laughs> imported clothes from Kampala for herself. She, was, she loved clothes so much. Actually, the most interesting part of this day, today is five years since my grandmother passed away. So it's quite interesting. My grandfather, on the other hand, was a man who was known for his style. He believed that shoes needed to shine and be like black mirrors. You know when you shine shoes, Kabisa, and then you can see your reflection on the shoes, literally. He believed that shirts need to be worn, tucked in, and with ties. And you would have to catch him dead wearing a suit that has not been ironed. My grandfather was a man of Nyade. 
Nyadi is a Luo word that really doesn't have like a translation in English. But how many of you know, let's suppose, let's suppose from Congo, like the Dapa men, those are men of Nyadi. That was what my grandfather was. So unfortunately, when I was nine, my mom died of TB. But the spark she had put in my life never simmered. My cousins took over the, the store at Bama and managed it and ran it. When I moved in and started living with various people, my, like my various relatives, I helped them get ready. Like when my aunts and my cousins were going for, you know, family gatherings, chamas, I'll help them. When my uncles, my grandfather were going for various places, I would put together outfits for them. So they provided a home and I helped them feel and look good. And that I'll illustrate to you now. Um, we have a model, Ian. Ian is part of, <laughs> of my team. So, <laughs> so, around that time, when I went to high school, so orange or black? Orange. Orange or black? Orange. Okay, let's go with orange. So when I went to, when I went to high school, I was considered one of the most stylish people. How many of you know Colombo? Those pants that are, you know, they're straight here, and when, when they go down, they become a bit flared. They're almost like, you know, how would I say, like, they're called Colombo in high school. The flared pants, you know them, right? So I had two of those. So one was to wear during the week, and the other I would wear like during funkies, you know, like when you go for music festivals, when you go for, you know, drama festivals, symposiums. How many hear me, man? Like you did this, didn't you? So I wore, I all had those, and then I had a piece. How many know sharpshooters? Sharpshooters were called a piece back then. So I owned, um, I owned those also. It's just that they're out of fashion now, could be wearing a pair today. But those are the things, you know, I used to wear then. So I feel like it was important for me to give you that background so that you understand where this story is going. You see, as I stand here, I am considered one of the biggest stylists in Africa now. With an award for it. Um, but then, before that, I was um, in campus. I went to, I studied economics and finance, by the way, which I dropped out of. <laughs> and I had gotten like a proper internship that was leading up to a job. I was supposed to become, to, I was working at Kenya Pipeline. Many know Kenya Pipeline? It's like a good, huge government parastatal and like the parks are good and everything. Well, I was on my way to becoming what, you know, was expected of me in my family. So at one point, as in campus, I only knew of three male stylists. One of them was called Sunny Dolat. The other one was called um, Eddie Kirindo. The third one was called John Kaveke. You know Kaveke? Yeah. And Kaveke is also a designer, but he also styles, just in case you didn't know. So one day, I decided to jump into Sunny's DM, or rather slide into his DM. Uh, so gray, gray, or this, or black? Okay, I think let's try gray. At least let me just do some work also. 
So I, I slid into Sunny's DM, and he called me back after two months. And then you see, what if we try something different, though? Do you think this is a lot? It's too much? No? Black. <laughs> no, let's try something different. Yeah? So I jumped into, I slid into Sunny's DM, and he called me after two months. And that call closed a chapter in my life and open the door to a new chapter. You get? You see, as we grow up in our families, we have these weird family heirlooms that restrict us and put us in a point where we are forced to, to be stuff that we don't want to do. Like in our family, many of us, as you see, my grandfather, my mother, my grandmother and many other guys are very much into style and fashion, but it was not considered as a job that you could do for by yourself. In other families, it's like, this is something that is supposed to be done by women, not men. And in other families, they have things like, oh, you know, our family, we drink. Have you heard that before? Yes, like we drink. So it is important to break the wheel, especially for that. How many of you watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> eh? Mother of Dragons, right? So it's important to break the wheel. And to date, there are people who really don't understand what I do. And just to give you like, perspective, interior is when you have, like, let's say, $2,000 and you are to furnish a house, it would look okay, I mean, $2,000 is a good amount of money. But then if you give 200, the $2,000, that's 200,000 Kenya shillings, to an interior designer, you know the house would look fantastic, right? Same thing applies to a stylist. A stylist does that, but with your wardrobe. So in my journey as a stylist, I've been humbled to dress various guys, black, or, black and white, black, black, not this, black, okay. I've been humbled to be able to style various people and various individuals. This needs a bit of cleaning. Don't need to be dusty, right? Various individuals, <laughs> and various personalities. Chances are if you mention someone in Africa, a celebrity right now, is that I have dressed them. Which is which? Yes. Which one? Yes. The print word one. Yes. Okay, before that, let's pick something else first. So the print or the orange? We do the print? Yes. So I've been humbled to work with individuals like, you know, Sauti Sol. How many know Sauti Sol? I've, been also, I've also been humbled to work with guys like, you know Mr. Easy? You know Yemi Alade? You know Shekaina from South Africa? You know Caroline Motoko? You know Amina Abdi? of the trend, so those are the guys. So last time, which one? Yes. No. This one? Yes. Sure. Yes. Too much? But it's a stage look, guys. <laughs> So I've been humbled to work with those guys, and I'm sure that the founders of Nelson, Nelson Taylor's look down upon me and are just happy with what I've achieved so far. Thank you, guys, and thank you for attending my TED Talk. <laughs> this is the look.
Thank you.